Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve 16 from Zero to Hero Beginners tutorial. If you're new to DaVinci Resolve, this is a complete video editor for your video projects, allowing you to handle basic media, adding text to your footage, perform visual and audio corrections, do color grading and add visual effects. This video will be a basic introduction based on uh, the free version without watermarks. There is of course some additional functionality in the paid pro version, but the good part is the workflow is uh, the same in case you want to upgrade later. Let's move on to launching the software as I assume uh, by now that you know how to download and install the correct version matching your operating system. DaVinci Resolve is available for both Windows and Mac. The first screen that you see when you launch the software is the project management page, where you see an overview of your existing projects. All your projects and media files are stored in one single database called local database. You have the option to create a new database in case that you want to store that on an external media, which could be helpful if you want to transfer projects between computers. For this tutorial, we will continue to use the local database and we will create a new project by hitting the new project button, where we have the option to name our project. Like that. This is how the main work interface looks like. It's divided into seven workspaces, supporting a workflow going from left to right. Starting with the media tab, where you can browse, import, preview and manage your own media. The cut page, where you can do fast and precise trimming of your media. The edit page, where you can do basic modifications and build your video project on a timeline. The fusion page, where you can add visual effects to your footage. The color page is dedicated for color correction and color grading of the footage. The fairlight page is dedicated to working with audio. With the delivery tab, you can set and render your project into a final video. In this beginner tutorial, we will go over the following workspaces. Media, edit, color, and delivery. The color workspace can occupy a whole video on its own. So in this beginner tutorial, the color tab will be limited to basic color correction to fix exposure and white balance in your shots. Under the media workspace, you will be able to import video, audio and pictures. Start by browsing your computer and locate the footage that you want to import. And in this case, it's some recordings I had from a nice trip to Sweden to Ring Knudstorf. Once you have located the clips that you want to import, you can easily preview them by just hovering the mouse on top of it. You can add a clip to your project by simply dragging it into the media pool. Sometimes you will be asked the question uh, if uh, the clips have different frame rate than the current project settings. It's really important that you press change so the timeline adapts to your footage. You can uh, import multiple clips by selecting them and dragging all of them into the media pool. In the right hand column, you have detailed information about audio and video for each clip. For this specific clip, you will be able to see the duration is around one minute. It's a 4K clip and it's recorded in 30 frames per second. When we have selected the clips that we want to use in our project, we can continue to the edit page where the same clips that we added to the media pool will be visible here on the left side. Where you will be able to preview them as well by just hovering over the clip. Start your video project by adding clips to the timeline by simply highlighting the clips and dragging them into the timeline. Each clip will be shown as a blue bar with a length equal to the duration in relation to the timeline. If the clip contains both audio and video, the audio part will be positioned at the audio track marked with green and the video will be positioned at the video track marked by blue. When I pull down the next clip, it will automatically snap to the rear end of the previous clip, making it very easy to make a continuous timeline. You can enable and disable the snapping function by the magnet up here. Once that is enabled, the clips will snap together. You can change how the clips appear on the timeline by enabling the timeline view options. 
It makes perfectly sense to have a little thumbnail representation shown on top of the video clip and the audio waveform shown on the audio clip. You can adjust the height of the video track and the audio track with these sliders. Let's just mute the audio track for now. What you will notice is that you have a split window up here and the one on the right side that will show what the timeline sees. And you can use the one on the left side to show previews of the footage that you're dragging into the timeline. If you think that is confusing, you can simply change that by clicking the single view button. Then it will only show what you see on the timeline. The timeline supports multiple tracks, so I can basically create a new track by simply dragging the footage on top of uh, the previous clip. And again, let's mute the audio track, not to destroy this tutorial. What you will see now is that the upper track has the highest priority. So when I move here, it would shift to the other footage. The video tracks are labeled with a V followed by a number, equal to the audio tracks where it's an A followed by a number. Each track can be locked individually, so you can move the rest of the timeline without affecting the clip that has been locked. You can also decide to hide a track similar to what we did with the audio. Let's just add in one more clip and unhide that one up here, like that. You can very easily zoom in on details on your timeline by simply selecting that portion or the section that you want to view, then press uh, detail zoom, then it will stretch out the selection so it maximizes the available uh, viewing space. You can uh, stretch and uh, compress the timeline by simply pressing uh, the option key on Mac and the Alt key on Windows and using your mouse cursor to either stretch or compress the timeline. Or you can use Shift combined with the mouse and just scroll through the timeline. You can zoom in and out of your footage by just using the scroll on your mouse. The player shows the video in time where the playhead is positioned. The playhead is the red line that I can move back and forward here. You can simply drag the playhead to a new position that you want to see. You can play back the timeline, stop it, reverse it through the controls below the preview window. But do you know there's another way to do this a lot easier by using the keyboard. You can use this key combination J, K and L. L will forward on your timeline, K will stop, J will reverse. These are pretty handy to know. The worst thing that can happen when you work in a video project is that you lose your work. And uh, that can happen uh, with a complex software like uh, Resolve, as it will crash uh, once in a while. But there's an easy shortcut that will allow you to save your work. And that is uh, Command S for Mac or Control S for Windows. So remember those shortcuts or that shortcut that will uh, be very beneficial, especially if it says edit up here in the top line. Let's just do that. Make sure to save your work frequently. The video that you are watching is a part of my latest Skillshare course, which is also the sponsor of this video. I will keep expanding this course on Skillshare with advanced editing functionality like object tracking and color grading. If you decide to join me on Skillshare, you can already now discover advanced functionalities like using the inspector together with keyframes to apply changes over time or how to add visual effects to your footage that make it really pop. And you can very easily do that if you click the link in the description and get two month free premium membership and explore your creativity. So there's really nothing to lose by checking it out. You might not be interested in my full class, but you should consider joining anyway, as Skillshare is an online learning community that through a membership offer you unlimited access to more than 20,000 classes. So there's plenty of opportunity to hone your skills if you want to explore something new. By the way, I'm not only teaching on the platform, I'm also a frequent user. Let's get back to the tutorial. Each individual clip on the timeline can be very easily moved to a new position by just highlighting it and dragging it to the new place. But make sure that you don't uh, add them into the same track because that will cut your original footage. Then you will end up cutting your original clip. So in case you want to change it, there is parts of it missing. So make sure to keep them in their own track when you move them around. But should this happen anyway, there's an easy way to fix the original footage. You can simply just highlight the footage like this and then you can drag it back and fill out the blank space. 
So try to avoid uh, cutting into the original footage and simply keep it on separate tracks like this. And as you saw before, adding a new clip on the top will automatically create a new video and audio track. If I want to shoehorn my footage in between these two clips, I can just position it here so it snaps to the first part and then I need to select the remaining clips and drag them backward like that. Then I can move the clip into position. Per default, the audio and video are linked together. But if I don't want that, I can simply press the chain icon up here and I can move the audio away from the video clip. And it will tell me exactly how much they are separated. And I can simply lock them again and then they will stay with this offset. Let's say that I want to change the duration of a clip that I've added to the timeline. Maybe it's too long. Let's say that this clip is longer than I want it to be. Then I can simply mark the clip like this and then uh, drag in the end and drag it down to the length that I want. And that works for both ends like that. I can change the playback speed by simply highlighting the clip, right clicking, selecting change clip speed. Right now default is 100. I can make it twice as fast by adding in 200%. So now the clip will be twice as fast. I can also slow the clip down. That means that I need to enter a percentage value that is below 100. I can reverse a clip if I want to do that by going into the same menu and selecting reverse. And now the clip will play back in reverse. You need to be careful about reversing clips if there's people or moving objects in there as they will move backward. You can very easily copy a clip by simply selecting them, holding down the option key while dragging them. And the option key is for a Mac where it will be the Alt key for Windows. Another shortcut that's really good to know is Command C that will allow you to undo an operation. So if I press here, Control Command C, it will just undo the last operation that I did. For Windows, that would be Control instead of the command. If I want to redo it, I need to press Shift Command C. So then you can just scrub through the timeline and make sure that everything is like uh, you want it to be. One uh, pass of the logo, that should be enough. So I don't want the rest of this clip. I simply go here and I highlight it and I pull this back until uh, I have removed the part of the clip that I don't want. And I can reposition the clip into the space where I want it, like that. I'm just taking away the audio here while we are playing around with this so you can hear what I'm actually saying. Now it looks like this. So it's a, it's a pretty capable editor that I think you will find useful. Let's drag one of the drone clips down to the timeline. So as you can see, the clip is much longer than we need. So we basically need to cut away the parts that we don't need. So let's say that we want to start the clip here. I simply select the blade tool and then I cut it here like this. Then I move to the frame where I want it to stop like that. And then I simply remove the clips by highlighting them and pressing backspace. Highlight, backspace. So now I have uh, the clip that I wanted isolated. Want. And let me show you what options that you have to modify directly from the main view. We start by selecting the clip and then we go up here under this menu where we select transform. And that will enable this white borderline that will allow me to transform the picture directly. I can resize it. I can even turn it to a certain degree. To the degree that I want. And I can reposition the window inside the frame. As we have made the upper video track smaller, the video track that is located uh, below will be visible. So let's just make this smaller like this and put it here. So that gives me a few options uh, to modify the clip. I have the option to crop the footage, 
if I select that option. And that way I can crop it in. Instead of uh, resizing it, I can crop it into the size that I want. Like this. So I can adjust the crop until I'm satisfied. I can even move it, the crop around. So I frame the, the stuff inside the picture that I want. Then I can go back to the transform option. And then I can move it to the position that I want. So the next option is a dynamic zoom. And the way this works is that you have two squares and basically the green square is your start frame. The red square is your end frame. So let's say that we want to start by looking at the cars here top down. And then we're going to move to the end frame here because the picture is shifting like that. And then we want to end up with a zoomed in image of the white car that is located down here, like this. So let's replay the frame and then uh, I'll just show you what it looks like. So it goes down and zooms into the white car like that. This is a way of adding some dynamics into your uh, footage. Oh, there's also an option to add annotations directly into the footage like this. Under the effects library, you have access to a variety of tools that will help you enhance your timeline. You will be able to add video transitions, audio transitions, titles and effects. You apply a video transition by selecting the transition and dragging it to the end of the clip. You remove the transition by simply highlighting it and pressing backspace. You can decide that the transition should affect two clips next to each other. You simply drag the transition on top of both clips. The duration of each transition can be changed by selecting it and dragging it to the desired duration. The properties of the transition can be changed through the inspector. And you have keyframe options similar to a standard clip as well. For simple fade in and fade out, you add them directly by dragging these markers at the end of each clip. For audio, you have the option to add a crossfade to make the transition less harsh. You can add a title to From your the footage. effects library, you can drag and drop text into your timeline and simply stretch it like you would do with a video clip into the desired duration. You can change the standard text through the inspector. You can change all the standard things about your text position and uh, orientation, the font face, color, size, uh, tracking, and all the stuff that you would expect that you would be able to change. You could also select to go for one of the more animated titles included with Resolve. Also with this type of title, the text can be changed through the inspector. Let's jump to the color tab. The color tab, that's a really, really powerful tool on DaVinci Resolve. And it's uh, way beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial. But uh, I will show you how you take a single clip and fix the exposure, the white balance and the saturation. We are starting out by selecting the clip that we want to fix. And a good candidate is this drone clip as it's shot in a relatively flat color profile that would make it look desaturated and flat. Let's see if we can bring that one back to life. There are some good tools in Resolve that will help us do this. And those are located under Scopes. And what we'll be looking for is the waveforms. Let's just detach it so we can take a closer look. The Scopes is a visual representation of uh, the color levels inside the footage, where the top level here indicates pure white and the base level indicates pure black. So what we want to do is we want to maximize our footage within this space to get a maximum contrast in the image. We are doing that through the color wheels that is located in low left. Where lift is dedicated for changing the shadows or dark areas of the image, the gain will change the highlights, gamma will change the midtones, and offset will provide a general offset of all three of them. You are changing the exposure level by changing the, the wheel that is located below each color wheel. 
So let's start by setting the blacks in the image as close as we can to zero. Then we are adjusting the highlights just a tiny bit, making sure that they are not being clipped at the upper limit of uh, the waveform. The midtones, we will adjust those a little bit down to increase the contrast in the image. So let's continue to fixing the white balance. And for that purpose, we have an eyedropper tool down here that's called white balance. And we simply go and find somewhere inside the picture that is white, like that. And what you will see there, then it fixes the white balance in the image. So that's the easiest way forward. So now with the white balance fixed, the picture still looks a little bit flat and desaturated. But we can easily fix that by adding a little bit more saturation. We simply go over the saturation down here below the color wheels and then we just pull that one up to so maybe 60. We can also go to the second tab here and we can change the temperature. If we don't like it, we can change the temperature a little bit. We can warm the picture up a little bit like this. Put that at 250. You can drag the mouse back and forward to set these parameters or you can simply just type in 250. Like that. We could also decide to boost the colors a bit by the color boost to make the image really pop. Let me just show you what it looked like before. So this is what it looked like and this is the end result. That's a huge difference. Let me just show you how you replicate this color correction to other clips recorded with the same camera. You simply go to the frame that you just color corrected, then you press right and then grab still. Oh, if you and then if you go into the gallery here, you will be you will see that the, the still that we just captured is uh, shown here. And if I pick another drone clip like this, then I simply right click on the frame that we captured before and then I will say apply grade. Close the gallery. Then you can see it's very easy to apply the color correction to the other clip. But even if it has been taken with the same camera, you will probably need to adjust it a bit to get it right. But at least it's a very good starting point to get a certain look and feel. That was my basic workflow for color correction with DaVinci Resolve. Now we made our basic color correction. Let's move on delivering the project. From the delivery page, you can decide if you want to export the whole project or only part of a project. Under the render settings, you can decide to export directly to YouTube, Vimeo, or export to some of the other formats supported by editing software. You can also decide to export the audio track alone. I will recommend custom to maintain the full control of the process. Then name your video. and pick a location, and in this case, we will just put it in the Resolve folder. Then we uh, reduce the video to 1080p and add it to the render queue. Once it's in the render queue, to make the final video, we need to start rendering. And now Resolve render the footage into a final video on the location that we just selected. Let's just take a look on the end result. If you're not into editing on your computer, then you might uh, want to do it on your smartphone instead. Did you see the video that I posted where I showed how you could edit footage from your Mavic Mini drone directly on your smartphone? You can access this video through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be back on the next one.